Let's start again. Hello everyone, it's Ian. Hi, it's me, it's again. We're here in our, uh, today's video, we're gonna show you what 12,000 pesos can get you as far as renting a condo in Quezon City. That comes to a grand total of around $225 per month. Now, our condo here is not big, as you'll see, but it came fully furnished and it has everything we need. So, without any further ado, we'll show you around. Okay, so here's a view of the back half of the condo. As you can see, it's basically just room enough for a bed and a little place to sit. We got the inverter air conditioner right here, which I'll tell you about in a minute. It came fully furnished, so we got this TV, which had Netflix logged into it when we got here, so we haven't logged out and we just use Netflix. Um, I have my own Netflix though, based in the United States, so we have two different Netflix accounts. Nice view there, we're on the top floor, eighth story. But one good thing is that we don't get any direct sunlight on the window, which if you've ever lived in a place that gets direct sunlight on a window in like either the morning or the afternoon, you know that the window can act as a giant heater and will definitely make your cooling costs go up. Okay, here's a view of the front half of the condo. A little place to sit there and eat. We've got the refrigerator which is also inverter type, refrigerator and freezer. There's the kitchen area. And a small bathroom in here, but has everything we need. The only thing it didn't come with was this washer, which I paid approximately, was it 8,000 pesos? It was about 8,000 pesos, somewhere around $150. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. Here's the shower area. Okay. So this is the inverter air conditioner, which I definitely wanted to have because I read that the inverter can save you up to 50% on your electric bill compared to the non-inverter. And we got our electric bill and it was 2,800 pesos for one month, which is about $50. And we pretty much run this thing all the time. We keep it at a cool 23, maybe 24, but it's always pretty comfortable in here. So the electric costs are not too bad at all. So here's the router for your wireless Wi-Fi. It costs less than $30 a month. It's a bargain. It's pretty fast too. We can watch videos and Netflix and there's really no problem. Got a freezer, the standard refrigerator. Now I'll tell you about the water situation. I've heard different things about whether you can drink the tap water in the Manila area, but I like to do what the locals do because I think they know what's up. So what the locals do is have this water delivered and any water that we drink comes out of here. We don't mind using this tap water to wash vegetables and fruit or even boil noodles in, but we don't really consume it in any significant quantities. I can't remember how many gallons each one of these holds, but we pay a total of 90 pesos for two. And there's a guy that just brings them right to the door and we just swap out our empty ones for the full ones. We call a phone number and he just shows up. It's really convenient. So it's less than $2 for a lot of water. This is what we do our cooking on. It's a little plug-in stove. We have a pretty standard microwave. This is for boiling water to make coffee. And then this is your rice cooker. All came with the apartment. Moving on to the bathroom. There's a few differences between your standard American bathroom and the bathrooms here in the Philippines. Here in the Philippines, most people do not have a hot water heater. They have what I remember seeing when I lived in Japan, this device here, which heats up the water as it flows through it. So your water is heated only when you're taking a shower and then it comes out through this thing. If you're gonna rent an apartment, you might wanna test the water because one issue here is that there's only three settings. And I didn't really realize this until moving in that setting two is just a little bit too cold it's just kind of lukewarm and then setting three is like too hot. So you might want to look for one of these things that has more settings so you get a bigger variety of water temperature. 
but it's not a big deal. I'm pretty much used to it. The lukewarm water. Now these washing machines are interesting. I've never seen one quite like this. Maybe people have these in the States, I don't know. But most bathrooms here will have a drain on the floor. So the way this thing works is there's a hook up here for the water and then it washes the clothes and all the water from the washing just comes out of that tube and just runs all over the bathroom floor. And I can show you that when we're running this thing. So here's the washer in action. As you can see, the water comes out of this tube here. Goes all over the bathroom floor. And then down this drain, which is obscured by soap suds. It's right there by the tube. Okay, now we're gonna talk about this device. It hangs on the wall next to the toilet. It's called a what? Bidet. Yeah, bidet. It's, it's for spraying bidet, bidet. yourself yeah. after going number two. Uh, if you are done pooping, you can use this one to clean your butt. <laughs> using soap. Okay. Because we, we're, not, we're not using the tissue. I still use the tissue. Yeah, because Filipino always use this. Yeah. I was told the that the, of this device when we moved in, device. the landlord told us that the toilet paper is not good because it can clog up the toilet. But then it makes me wonder why it's why there's a thing here to hold the roll. So I still use some toilet paper. I haven't tried this thing yet, but I might. I'm open to it. Yeah, you have to use that. That's easy. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> Maybe today. Okay. That's it. Goodbye, guys. Thank you for watching. Yeah, but they're, you gotta tell them they're right there. Just wait, then just think about. That concludes today's video, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for watching. I hope you like and subscribe to our channel for today's video. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we love you.